Hey guys, it's Jan, not a real farm. Check out what my fig tree is doing, finally. Um, you know, I've been super busy all week. I watered it, I walked away. And then all of a sudden, my husband said, hey, did you take a look at the fig tree? And I said, no, not recently, because we were so busy. And when he came into our little uh, greenhouse here, try to block the sun so you can see the leaves, the fig tree has all of a sudden started to open. So the temperatures are just right in here that it really likes it. So pretty soon, crossing fingers, maybe we'll have some figs. We'll run really quick over the flats so you guys can see that. I've got, a, like I said, a four foot heat mat underneath the plants. So we've now started to see that the king of the north bell peppers have started to come up. And then, of course, all over here is the tomatoes. We've got beans over there. We've got rice over there in the far corner. And way over there, I'll just move. <laughs> We've got our beans and spinach, and they're all leaning towards the window. They love this window. So all is going really well. We've got some, some plants that are sort of going, hey, I need some watering today, but that's no big deal. All of our plants are doing fantastic. So we're gonna pop on into the greenhouse and see, remember we planted those seven flats? We're gonna take a look and see if we actually have, or if anything even came up since I've taken a look. All right, so the greenhouse currently, it's mm, sitting at 25 degrees and it's 10.30 in the morning. It's glorious in here. It's too hot though to work in a sweater, so it's awesome. Let's go take a look at our trays. Now, remember what we did was we left a couple of these here because they weren't necessarily needing the heat mats. And then over there, we have the heat mats on the table. So let's take a look and see if we've got anything coming up here. Oh, I see some progress. Now, this is a tray. I'm just going to get closer for you. This is a tray of flagpole scallions. And hopefully this doesn't blur. See, they're just starting to come up here. Flagpole scallions, um, if you can get, a, get yourself some seed, grow to be two feet tall, and they are a perennial. So if you live in an area that's warm enough to keep them in the ground and overwinter them, um, these are green onions, and they grow to be about two feet tall, which is pretty tall for a green onion, I'm thinking. So these guys are just starting to take off, so that's great. I did a whole tray of them, so I just have to figure out where I'm going to put them. Now let's take a look at the other tray here. This is our pea tray. Let's see what's going on here. Excellent. The peas are just starting to bust out. I'm going to adjust some of them to make sure that the roots go down into the dirt. But so far, so good. Looking forward to peas this year, that's for sure. Okay, so this is where we put all of our little micro tomatoes. Now, they were only planted a week ago, so there's definitely not going to be anything in there. Oh, they've got some action going on in here. What's this? Put some water in here. Okay, so we have our field pumpkin is coming up there, if you see. It's our field pumpkin. And if you've never tried growing psyllium, totally easy. So this is psyllium in the back here. And we've got big broccoli growing here. So we've got to get in here and do some watering. But yes, if you've never tried growing psyllium, really easy. Let's see what else is in here. What do we got going on here? All right, so we've got this guy coming up here is called a collective farm woman melon. If you've never seen them, take a good look at them. They're really, really simple to grow and really sweet um, to the taste. So what else do we have going on here? We've got a Merlot lettuce coming up. I'm just trying to maneuver this camera while I'm putting everything else down. Our Merlot lettuce is coming up right in there. Salad bowl, Merlot. All kinds of good stuff. So the lettuce is going great. So all we have to do now basically is just give it some water um, and just continue. But that's pretty good for a week, I'll say. Let's give these guys some water. 
the best thing about having um, snow kind of at your fingertips is you can just leave it in buckets and it sits there and it melts. Then you can use some of the water to get going. Oh, just trying to turn the camera around so you can see here. I'm going to get some more water, but lots of stuff growing in here taken off, so I'm really happy with that. In the meantime, however, though, we can take a look at the blackberries and admire them. The leaves are all starting to come out on these. You can see all the way down here. They are really starting to bud, so this is great. So we've got this guy here. And like I was saying, the canes actually go all the way up to the next panel. So I've had to sort of anchor him in because he was a little bit too tall. I'm not going to trim him. They've already been tipped. So let's see what happens. Moving right along. You can see here my comfrey has finally started to... There's more of it actually coming out now. Guys, I really thought I killed the comfrey with the temperatures. But you can see here that the comfrey is alive and doing well with this. I've got all new comfrey coming out, so this is good. Comfrey, as you know, as many of you know, can be used for many, many, many different types of ailments and skin problems. So, yeah, I'm actually really glad that this survived. There's actually another one here. So it's good. Everything survived. Comfrey is amazing. Let's see what else is in here. So I'll show you this. If you ever look at your horseradish and you think you've killed it, all you simply need to do is really just open the leaves here. I'll get closer if I can. This horseradish is still alive, even though they look terrible, like they're completely dead. If you pull the leaves down, you see, he's still alive. So all of these pieces of horseradish will bounce back, and I'll have to pick certain bins to put these in. So I'll be growing multiple horseradishes this year. So horseradish never dies. Oh, check this out. Wow. So I've been growing a plant in here since last year, and it's called gobo. And gobo on the second year is an extremely healthy plant for your digestive system, for all sorts of different ailments and things. And so you can actually plant these um, the first year. So the first year you can use the leaves for certain things, but I didn't. What I did was I left it. And on the second year, which is what this year is going to be in the fall, I can harvest this root. You can dehydrate it or you can freeze dry it and you can use it for tea. So it's called Gobo, G-O-B-O. -O. Take a look. Um, this one is coming back strong. It's a surprise. I, I haven't been in here for about a week, um, like I said, because I've just been busy doing other things. But um, you can see here, it's super strong. It almost reminds you of uh, rhubarb. But take a look, see what the health benefits of gobo are, and give it a try. Super easy. If it can survive in my weather, it can survive in yours. This is my roses, guys. So you can see that they are doing well. If I can back out here. It's so hard if I... There we go. It focuses better if I put my hand just behind the, the leaves there. But lots and lots of growth happening. Let's take a look at the other one. Even this one is amazing. Look at all the buds on this one. And it's it's actually getting pretty tall. This is a newer one that I've got. But the first one that we just saw, it's, it's a lot taller. So they're happy in here. Look at these thorns. And then one more time, we've got blackberries, except I had to actually put this blackberry up a trellis because it got so tall I didn't know what I was going to do with it. So it's almost to the top of the trellis. It's starting to do the same thing where it's budding out. So we will definitely have some leaves and hopefully have some fruit from it this summer. Awesome. Some more heirloom asparagus. Look at that. In this bed, there's nothing so far either, but... Everything's starting to, man, it's just, I can't believe how time has flown. I feel like I was just doing a closeout video for fall and now we're back to spring. So this is good. Our winter wasn't as terrible as, uh, as last year. So 
As soon as I find the asparagus, guys, you will be the first ones to see it. Down here is my mint. Now, I've kept mint. It's spearmint. I really like spearmint. And I've kept the mint in a cup because, as everyone knows, mint can really take over your herb bed. So to contain it, I've kept it in this little cup, which so far <laughs> is working. Um, but these will come back, and they will come back with a vengeance. And have you ever tried spearmint in a salad? Oh, my goodness, it's so good. Here's my sage. There's my little alien guy. You guys ever watch the Alien Trilogy? So I found him one day, and he was in a snail form. So I just thought that was cool to put that in my bed. That's just me. <laughs> Here's my sage. I'm still coming out and scooping sage off of last year's crop. Sometimes I'll throw it on chicken. But um, this guy's happy. He's alive. Um, as a matter of fact, if I can get up close enough. Let's see if I can get here. There's tiny, tiny, tiny little new leaves there. If you can see right where, right there. So he is going to give me some more sage this year. That's awesome. We have a eucalyptus bush, which survived the winter. And yes, it's called, guys, if you ever get yourself a eucalyptus bush, it smells exactly like Vicks. It is actually addictive. Um, it, and it really makes good tea too, if you have a cold. So eucalyptus smells amazing because as soon as you open the door to your greenhouse, it's the first thing you smell. That and oregano. Amazing. Here's my old thyme bush, but I can already tell that with the little green at the bottom here, it's already starting to grow back. So we've got thyme. So I'll do a little bit of trimming here. Yeah. See, we've got thyme over here too. So we'll have lots of herbs to add to our cooking. This is majorum, which I love the smell of. All these herbs will come back this year, so this will be great. And then over here, this is a little bit of an experiment for me. This was thyme. I'm not thyme, sorry, uh, basil. I'm seeing that these almost don't look dead. I just wanted to see if the basil would come back in the greenhouse. Sometimes it dies, sometimes it doesn't. So I've left the roots in because I want to see if it comes back. Parsley is another story. Parsley, it, it'll, it'll just keep coming back to you. You can see here, I've got some green all the way down in here. So it'll come back with a vengeance. I love parsley. And these little guys in here, these corms, this is lemongrass. I've left the lemongrass in, the roots in, to see if it will overwinter for me. Sometimes I like to do these little experiments to see what my greenhouse is capable of in the winter. Um, I don't want to pull too much on it, but they're in here and they're rooted nicely. I just don't want to wreck it just in case it actually does come back. I don't know. I'm just experimenting. I'm going to put the camera all the way down here so you can see. Here's my new buds for my grapevine. Right here too. So he's alive and well. So let's see how long it takes for the leaves to come out. Oh, take a look at this, guys. We have red walking onions that are starting to wake up to walk. Check that out. Amazing. I don't see anyone else. I just see this one that has come alive and started to wake up a little with the warmth in the greenhouse. So we'll keep an eye on it. But it looks like the red walking onions are waking up. So, guys, this little pot here is full of lavender seeds. And I threw those in there, just wanted to smell the lavender um, for the summer last summer, thinking, hey, maybe I could overwinter this. And I thought, it got a little cool this winter, so it's not going to happen. But take a look. They came back. So hopefully that didn't come out too blurry, but I'm just trying to show you. The lavender came back in a zone three. And it's really surprising because lavender, I think maybe is hardy to what it's supposed to be, a zone six, I can't remember. But it survived and it's coming back. So guys, just because they say it can't be done doesn't mean it can't. So we've got some repotting to do on some of the plants in the smaller greenhouse. So that's what I'll be doing this afternoon, guys. Once again, I apologize. I have been super busy all week long. Um, and we've just confirmed a project that we're going to be taking part in where we're going to be breeding ground cherries. And uh, that project is going to take us about four years 
to complete. So um, we've got ourselves into a lot of projects that we're doing. So I just hadn't had time to actually do a video this week. So we're all caught up. Um, I will do my best to post another video this week because I'm thinking I'm going to have to break down and come in and do a lot more transplanting soon. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. If you have any questions, pop them below. Thumbs up if you like the update and see you soon.